Right then, so this is the last of it. So I'm going to differentiate it. And now it's stationary. When dy by dx is equal to zero. So 4x cubed is equal to zero. So x is equal to zero. I want the coordinates. If I put y, put x is zero into there, it's going to coordinate to zero, zero. If I differentiate it again, I get 12x squared. So when x is zero, d2y by dx squared is also zero. So what does that tell us? That doesn't really help us a lot, does it? So if I look at the gradient on either side now, because that's not really helped us, has it? So let's look at the gradient. Let's look at the gradient for x is minus 1. So dy by dx would be 4 times minus 1 cubed, so that's minus 4. Then let's look at 1. So dy by dx would be 4 times 1 cubed, so I'm using this here, yeah, which would be 4. So it's gone negative, 0, positive, so it must be me. There. Quick look at this one, let's see if we can get it done. So dy by dx is 3x squared. So I know it's stationary when dy by dx equals 0. So 3x squared is 0, x is 0. If I put 0 into it, I'm going to get 4 out, so it's 0, 4, if I put it into y. Then, so I've got my stationary point, so now I can differentiate it again. It gives me 6x. Ooh, if I put x is 0 in, d2y by dx squared is 0, and I'm not quite sure what's going on. So I want to check the gradient on either side of it. So the try x is minus 1. So I've got 3 times minus 1 squared, which will give me 3. Then if I try 1, which is on the other side of 0, I get 3 times 1 squared, which is 3. So that's how I think about that one. So at minus 1 it's positive, at 0 it's negative. Plus one is positive, so that must be a point of inflection. Uh, I reckon that's just done. I feel a little bit rushed, but sorry about that. We'll run for it again in class. It's quite nice, though. Bye bye.